Hi friends, how have you all been? I hope you're all good and have a drink beside you or a snack or even both. I suggest both <laughs> or at least a cup of water because we are here for a long journey on a sketchbook tour video of this big boy right here. I'm super excited because this is my first sketchbook tour video here on YouTube um, and, and I'm super excited to show you guys this sketchbook in particular because my style throughout it changed so many times I, I wouldn't even be able to count and I started it in November 2021 which is a long time ago so once I figured out that I think my style came to its true form per se of course I think it might change over and over again but I think uh, it doesn't make sense for me to continue this sketchbook I have like a um, little bit less than a half left and it just feels like the right time to move on to the next chapter of my art journey uh, I hope it makes sense even if it's not finished I think there is a lot of uh, things that we can look at over here and I hope you enjoy it. Also, after we're done with this sketchbook, um, stay tuned because I will also show you the new sketchbook I have started right here. It's my first Moleskin sketchbook and I will show you as well this sketchbook that I also started and I think I will be working in both of these. And this is a render crescent render sketchbook it doesn't bleed through at all but i will talk about it a little bit more uh closer to the end of the video so let's put it away for now and get to reviewing the sketchbook okay so i think we should start by reviewing the stickers how <laughs> i saw other people do it so this three stickers uh, were done by me for my first ever art sale that I did uh, this Christmas and it was super fun. I do not have an online shop yet but I'm hoping to have it one day and maybe include some of these designs. Let me know which one you like more. Um, I also uh, have designed these and this sticker as well. This sticker I just got at a local um, stationery gift store. It's called Gifted Type uh, here in Ottawa. And let's see, this was uh, bought at a flea market. Uh, these two sticker of cute little hammies are done by my friend Chelsea. I will link uh, all the artists that I mentioned today down in the comments. Uh, so. Feel free to check them out, they're all amazing. Um, this was, uh, I don't know, right? I think it was from the gifted type shop as well. This sticker uh, and this one over here is done by a cool artist I met at a Christmas sale where I was selling my stuff too. I can't remember their name, but they do participate in comic cons a lot and I adore this sticker because I love Avatar. If you're watching my video, let me know if you're an Avatar um, Last Airbender fan as well because I love Zuko so much. Uh, so to talk about the sketchbook first, before we start, this is a, a Loi Storm 1917 sketchbook. It is uh, their art release of sketchbook, which are a little bit thicker than their usual bullet journals, which uh, is great. The paper is absolutely amazing for the price and how many pages you get. So what happened is that this first page and the next page were done around the same time which you can tell by the style very similar very colorful uh, a lot of pencils um, and overall it's in the style that 
was uh, popular on Instagram and I saw a lot of artists sketch fruits and do cool little doodles with pencils and so I was inspired by that and that's what I did here. After that, I think I haven't used this sketchbook for at least several months. I do not know what happened there. Possibly school. I'm pretty sure I was still in school. So yeah, the next page is a completely different style all of a sudden. But be prepared, you will see a lot of switches in style like that. I hope it's okay. Okay, so back to the first page. Uh, this uh, is my cat Tofu here and here. And I turned this little sketch uh, into a sticker right here afterwards, which I adore because he's so cute and squishy uh, and I love him so much. And then this is a cute little freebie illustration I got from my order from an amazing artist uh, called Nicole Josephine. I will link them under the video, of course. I, I love their stickers and their uh, little illustration shop they have. So yeah, I decided to put it here. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I covered something ugly up underneath, which I encourage you guys to do because you should enjoy your sketchbook. And if you drew something that you really don't like, just cover it up with a new drawing or, or how I did with just someone else's drawing that is way better than what there was before. So yeah, here's a little life hack for you. Okay, so next, uh, these are some drawings that I did with ballpoint pen. I used to love sketching with just the four a color ballpoint pen in my old sketchbooks uh, so I decided to try doing that again and I actually really enjoy these two drawings they give me especially this one is kind of giving me that old painting uh, vintage renaissance art vibes and then this portrait I don't really enjoy it just um, I don't know just the neck is too crooked and I was using gouache but it looks like acrylic because I put my layers very thick but also I did it really long time ago probably also about a year ago so at this point I just have a different style but I think what I like about it is its uh, color palette I really enjoy earthy greenish warm tones so i do like that i incorporated it the next page is just some pencil drawings that i did i'm pretty sure all the references uh, i got were from pinterest and i just wanted to draw more with graphite because this is the material that for some reason i used the least in my sketchbooks just because it seemed too basic for me but to be honest it's hard to find an artist who is really good with graphite and it is very much appreciated in the art community and if you use graphite that's amazing because it's actually a really really <laughs> cool material it's so simple but you can do so many things and render out your drawing the simplest way uh, with less less materials and it would still look absolutely amazing Uh, here I tried to use watercolor for the first time in the sketchbook and the paper held up pretty well. You could see it kind of wrinkled but I didn't tape it or anything and I used a lot of water because I was trying to do this watercolor exercise when I put uh, a lot of water onto the paper and then add blobs of paint on it and kind of like let it drape all over. And then I liked how it turned out, so I decided to draw a character on top of it. And to be honest, I still like it a lot, just because um, the color palette is so simple. It's just teal and red, and it's one of my favorite palettes, and kind of reminds me of like a sunset. And I don't know, I, I really enjoyed this illustration. The one on the right, <laughs> I was also trying use more watercolors and I had some 
uh, watercolors laying around with gold paint uh, in them and I wanted to try it but I do not like how it turned out. I definitely overworked the sketch but that's okay because you know this is a sketchbook and doing that helped me to understand how much this paper can handle and that sometimes it's better to do less than more and it is really hard to stop and I'm still struggling with stopping uh, when doing my paintings but I think I am in the process of getting better which is the most important part because the most important thing is to just keep practicing no matter what and maybe at some point it will get better Okay, so these two pages are actually from the stone paper sketchbook that I got to try out and then I did not end up using uh, my sketchbook um, that I got and decided to just paste some sketches that I enjoyed into this working sketchbook. Stone paper is very interesting, uh, it didn't really work out for me as I use a lot of water and alcohol markers it is cool uh, because it doesn't bleed through whatsoever uh, you can look up more videos uh, because i don't think i'll be reviewing it the problem is when i'm uh, using my markers it keeps picking up the layer the previous layer after i try to put down the next one so in my style, it is not really working for me as I like to put a lot of layers down, but maybe it will work for you. It is still a cool paper, sketching was awesome, and the coolest part that after a long time passes, the pencil doesn't smudge, up, like, doesn't smudge at all, which is amazing because here on a regular paper, you can see they were so much more white burn before, and even though I sprayed them, they still kind of tend to fade and smudge around, but yeah, I think the stone paper could be good for that or for just regular pen sketches. Uh, this is also stone paper, just uh, I think I used, I think I firstly did like a marker sketch, didn't like it, tried to cover it up with gouache, still didn't like it. Um, it's just not exactly how I wanted it to be, but I kept it just because I kind of like the colors. Uh, then this is also from this stone paper. Okay, if you hear any weird noises in the background, my cat Leia is going crazy right now, specifically in the middle uh, of the filming. Yeah, you are being bad. <laughs> Sorry guys. I, I think this sketchbook would be great for someone who doesn't layer and does sort of more of a cartoony doodling style or puts only just one or two layers maximum but if you're expressive or super messy artist like me i don't think it could work unfortunately but the idea is, is really cool uh, then these are just some of the portraits i did i sort of like it i like the colors a lot but it still could have been better i think i don't want to sound too negative it's just interesting to review a very old sketchbook as you most likely gonna hate everything <laughs> in it uh, besides the recent sketches uh closer to the end of it just because we all progress and change so much and this is why it's so important and i encourage everyone to keep sketchbooks or even if you do sketches maybe put them in a binder together because when you look back you look how much you progressed or how much your style changed so yeah forgive me if i keep making negative comments about my own art it's only because uh how much time has passed and how much i improved and i just keep seeing how many things i would have done differently now so that's all this is one of my favorite pages probably uh, i've done it around halloween time of course and even though it's super super messy i just like how simple and how vibrant it is i really like this character I do not know who they are, but I definitely want to draw this OC more. 
uh, okay next page is uh, where I was trying out how to draw with ballpoint pen I saw Chris Hong was uh, trying out sketching with more pens and I thought they look so cool and I wanted to try it too so I just used a regular ballpoint pen didn't like it as much as just a regular big um, black pen I really enjoyed the way it works it's very cheap they usually sold in a pack of several pens for like a dollar or even less so I do recommend them I actually ended up using it just instead of my pencil uh, much more just because it has a capacity to be very pale and go very dark and then it doesn't fade like graphite usually does so yeah I ended up really enjoying it so this spread was super fun to do I did some collaging using some vintage paper and some washi tapes I used it over here and over here for the sweater uh, and some for her hair that was super fun to do also I was watching a lot of ladybug at the moment so I did sketch of sketches of ladybug and marionette which are spoiler the same person um, yeah love that show by the way let me know if their other fans are there I think it is way deeper than some people think uh, okay next page is my gameplay for a uh, doubloon talk <laughs> i did these uh sketches of my uh cat sauna which is based on my cat leia uh and i did this little book over here where i wrote down how much money i spend or gain and some of the things that happened to me during my travels and then I also doodled some of the uh, characters I meet or this is my horse uh, forest for example that I got from one of my adventures um, yeah no I, I really enjoyed and the sketches I did with a highlighter uh, for the initial sketch and then I just traced it with the black big pen again which is a super fun and easy way to sketch and you guys should try it uh, over here I was trying stamp carving for the first time so I did this uh, cute little design of a Totoro as a tarot card of the moon and this is how the print turned out uh, I still have that stamp and I did a couple of prints that I sold on a Christmas market after that so that was very fun I want to try to do more of the stamp carving it was super super fun Okay, this page I did at a cafe, uh, which was super cool. I was planning to paint this one over the top with gouache. I never got to it. Plus, I kind of really liked the sketch and thought I would probably ruin it, especially since it took so long. So I, I'll just keep it like that. And these are done with watercolor. I really wanted to get better at watercolor. This was always my um, most challenging medium for me. And I kind of ended up liking these uh, portraits I got to do, especially this one. Um, I really like the colors and I really like how expressive it is. And overall, after that, I started using watercolor more, which is awesome. So these are some more pen doodles. I think I used a bit of pencil here and then decided to use my uh, black pen on top of them. And then here I was trying out a Ferris wheel press ink that I had. Uh, someone gifted it to me uh, last Christmas. So yeah, that was me trying it. And I do not love how it turned out, but the ink was... The prettiest ink that I've ever seen, so <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, all right, next page is I went to the art supply store and got some Tombow water based markers, and this is me trying them. Here is me realizing that I love using markers, 
but do not love that they don't blend so well. So <laughs> wait for me until I get my first alcohol markers and that's where where the style of my art completely turns around because this was only a beginning and I do like the spread. I think I want to do more of the uh, similar layout where I do the same character in some sort of pose and then do like a close-up portrait. Um, I don't draw a lot of OCs but it is really fun to try and draw the same character over and over in different poses. Okay, this is probably one of my favorite spreads. Uh, this was just a little doodle I did uh, somewhere away from home on a random scrap of paper that I found. Uh, but I ended up liking it a lot, so I pasted it in. And then this was uh, a cute little illustration I did with watercolors and uh, colored pencils. And I don't know, it's just so nice. I don't know what about it, but I ended up really liking it. And to be honest, I haven't done anything in the same style since then, but maybe I should do a little bit more of cartoony sketches. Let me know after you will see all of my sketchbooks, um, all of my sketches and all of my sketchbooks, what style you like most, um, cartoony one on more, or more realistic one because I will have some more realistic things at the end. Uh, these are just some portrait studies and different materials. I One of my goals was when I got the sketchbook is to try to have as much free freedom and to use as many different uh, materials as I can to figure out what I like to use the most. So here you can see a highlighter and a four color uh, ballpoint pen, uh, some uh, highlighter and a red pen. This is a charcoal pencil. Love this sketch, love it. I should use more of the uh, charcoal pencil. And then these are mild liners, mild liner highlighters. I got a set of these uh, earthy tones and decided to do a little portrait using those and actually I ended up liking it a lot so this was me confirming again that I love using markers. Uh, this was me at the uh, Christmas art sale where me and my friends were selling our art stuff. Uh, these are my uh, friends Chelsea and Lauren uh, and uh, these are doodles of some of the customers we had and the Christmas market was at a super cute local church. So I had to sketch out a bit of the uh, building, of course. Everything was done, it was just that um, big black pen again. Uh, this says uh, just the portrait I did for uh, my friends uh, for around Christmas time. And then this is a sketch I done in a charcoal pencil again, which I ended up liking a lot. So keep reminding myself that I should come back to this material. It, it is very fun to draw with and it looks so effective in the end because of how dark it can get. And I like that it doesn't have as much of the uh, shine uh, when you look at it through with the light source um yeah so like it's more mad than the graphite here i was trying out oil pastels that i had it is a very old cheap set that i had and i do not love how they worked i got um year oil pastels after that and i have a video on my channel uh, where I review those and do a cool little study and a painting on wood with those oil pastels. But this was kind of like a sequel <laughs> to it, just me trying things out. I kind of do like this sketch, it's just so weird, it has such weird colors, but I still like it, do not know why. And this was a study of a Van Gogh painting the garden at Arles. Just a quick little something to just see and study how the pastels work and how to blend them. 
Uh, this is one of my favorite spreads. It's done with the matte graphite pencils that I saw at the art store and wanted to try. To be honest, I do not understand. It still is shiny, so I don't really know what is matte about them. Um, but overall, really like how the sketches look and it didn't even smudge that much. Like it didn't fade much, which I did enjoy. I think um, it was pretty good for just a graphite pencil. Uh, so here I was using my mild liner highlighters again from that set. I will link everything down below. Uh, and I enjoyed, I enjoyed doing these portraits. They turned out super messy, but I don't know, I still like it. I think what I like about them is the color palette for sure. It's just so warm and inviting and I don't know, they're just so ex expressive and so messy. And what most important is that this helped me figure out that I 100% want to draw with markers. So then, as a Christmas gift, my partner got me what? Markers! <laughs> and uh, the first video on my channel, or no, sorry, the second video on my channel was me reviewing Copic markers and trying Copic markers for the first time. And this is the page um, from that video, which I really enjoyed. Um, I really was blown away by alcohol markers really never tried them before for this style um and uh continued to use them ever since uh copics are pricey so i actually started using a hoo-hoo's together with copics because i was still missing quite a few colors and i do recommend them they still work together and a hoo-hoo in my opinion are just as good and much cheaper so yeah i definitely want to do a video where i review a whole -ho sets that i got uh, and compare them to copics so stay tuned for that these are just some fun uh multi-color pencils i found at a kids section at an art store and decided to just <laughs> try them out because I haven't tried them ever since my childhood and I was curious to see if I would manage to draw something so that was just like a cute tiny little sketch I did while watching some sort of dating show on Netflix I can't remember which one was it if it was I think it was new season of too hot to handle um so yeah this was a character I drew based on a person who was filmed there <laughs> uh, then these was done around christmas time i wanted to do some sort of uh, winter landscape so i did that with only copics um yeah and i really like this palette that i used with pinks and greens for some character drawings and for portraits i was still figuring out my style and i wanted to use it with liners but I actually ended up going away from using liners and using it more on its own. So just markers and maybe a bit of rendering with colored pencils or colored ballpoint pen at the end. Um, yeah, uh, so this is the next page. This was a little scene study from a uh, Little Women movie. I hate, <laughs> hate how it turned out. I don't know why I used so much of this pink, uh, opaque highlighter, but never mind that. It was still fun to sketch with. And then these are some characters. I saw a lot of artists use uh, Copics uh, for their uh, OCs and little characters and do one for each color. So I did some splashes of color on the paper and then doodle the character on top which was actually super fun to do i really like them i really like how it turned out uh so this was another attempt at a style that is just not my thing so after that i just quit the idea <laughs> of trying to do a cartoony style 
and this was watercolor markers uh, that I ordered from the brand Artistro. Uh, they're so fun to use. They literally work just as like markers and then you add water and they blur out so much. It's really cool. I did enjoy using them and still using them sometimes. This sketch uh, was done on a stone paper again, <laughs> even though I tried it realized I don't like it and decided to try it again uh, with newly bought Copics which, you know what, I kind of ended up liking how expressive the brush strokes look especially on the coat but on the face you can see especially how many smudges there are and why that happens is because the layers never dry or dry for like a day uh, the hair dryer doesn't help to speed up the process and the next layer I tried to put mix up the old layer underneath so it's it's just really difficult and it's it's not helpful with layering just like I said before so after that to just compare two papers I went ahead with the same style and did uh, more portrait studies with Copics and loved how they turned out. It's just so cute. I love the color palette a lot. I do not know why I haven't used the same color palette ever since. My sketches become more and more colorful. I definitely want to take inspiration from this page and draw something in this palette again, which is basically just very earthy mm, tones. And I think the reason why I like them it's because it just reminds me of these old, old paintings so much. I think I really like that. Then next page, don't look here, just random doodles. <laughs> me trying out some markers and pens. Uh, this was another portrait I did in, uh, with my Copic markers. I wanted to do something more with singular color wash. So I used a lot of green and tried to put an accent on one of the eyes and render it out more to kind of bring attention to it. So I, I do like to do, uh, to use that little trick in my sketches and ended up using it a lot more ever since I did that here. Next, this was the day when I felt bad and kind of sad and depressed. And so I did super random sketch sketches with charcoal and color pencils and I think it looks horrible. I mean it looks kind of cool, kind of expressive, but just not my style, but it was amazing as an art therapy. I did feel better after that, so I recommend you guys, when you're not feeling it, just grab whatever <laughs> messiest material you have and just go for it and just put it on uh, put it on the paper. It doesn't even have to be a portrait. It could be abstract lines and doodles. Whatever works for you. Uh, okay, next page is one of my favorites. Uh, I decided to, in order to get used to the markers, to do a little clothing study. And I went for the most difficult thing I could find to challenge myself, which is Renaissance dresses. Um, yeah, although it took me a long time, I am kind of in love with it, especially with this transparent effect that you can do, and the way I did it is that I just didn't color this part as much, and went for a very light washes of blue reflecting the sky, and red reflecting the clothing, the, the dress, and then you just go with the jelly roll white pen on top and it looks it looks good right i don't know i don't want to praise myself too much but i think it looks really good i think the arm might be too long <laughs> but let's not look at it let's just look how beautiful all the folds are and the main uh focus of my of my study here was the clothing and i like how it turned out so yeah this was all done during uh, live streams on TikTok. This was one day and this was another day. I asked people to give me some characters. This is what I drew for uh, my viewers. And I really like 
uh, the spread itself. It's just like how vibrant it is, how many things are going on here. I don't think Wednesday looks like herself here much, but you could still recognize her, I guess. I, I think I kind of want to redraw her again, just... I don't know. The TV show is so good. I love it so much. And I love Wednesday so much. And I overall really want to do like maybe a spread with all the characters from the show. Because they all are my favorites. I can't even pick one. Comment me which character from Wednesday is your favorite. That way I know that you watched all the way till here. And a true OG <laughs> viewer. Okay, you don't have to do it. Uh, okay, next is more livestream doodles. This was a follower that asked me to draw him and some more characters for viewers and then um, another character from Wednesday. I really like how she turned out here, um, Enid. Uh, her hair were so colorful, but I still wanted to make sure they come across as blonde. So this was kind of tricky to do, but I think it turned out pretty cute. And I ended up liking using the Jelly Roll white pen a lot for these to kind of add some highlights and to show that the hair is kind of messy. Uh, so yeah, I do recommend to use this pen if you like uh, drawing with markers. Uh, then this uh, was my drawing of one of those TikTok videos. I don't know if you've seen those, but it's where a person is like, oh, please draw me and starts posing. And usually I don't do those, but I really like the lighting and the color palette and the person. <laughs> so I drew them twice. I did this portrait first. And what happened is Copic suddenly uh, created a huge black splash all around this eye over here, or no, all around this eye over here, and I almost ended up throwing it out, but then I just went ahead and painted it over with my paint markers. I was super sad that this happened because I, like, everything was going good until that point, so even though I fixed it, it just didn't feel right, so I did draw them again. <laughs> so I have um, two portraits of the same person, and they added, ended up noticing my video and said they liked it. So that was nice. And speaking of which, if you are out of ideas what to do in your sketchbook, just go on TikTok and draw whatever, whoever. Uh, I think it's really fun because this is another TikTok person that I drew. They did not ask to draw them, but how could I not? They had such a style going on, such a character, very gothic, very chic. Um, so yeah, really enjoyed drawing this person. Uh, so we're moving towards the end of my sketchbook. This is me figure out, figuring out more of my markers. I thought maybe I should try to use more of the paint markers, but I don't have this many colors, so I gave up on that idea. <laughs> I used the, um, one of those brush, uh, markers that come in a pack with, like, line art markers. I don't remember what brand it is, but it was kind of fun to doodle with, even though I don't know if I will be doing it more. And then these are just some fun poses I found on Pinterest, super like random, not nothing that I do usually in my sketchbooks, but um, <laughs> it was fun to do nonetheless, I really like the color palette. Uh, then here I went for my first hockey game to watch. Uh, senators and after that I kind of got inspired and drew some hockey players uh, that played for or still playing for senators and senators uniform I saw a lot of uh, artists I don't know if it's like an art trend or something going on lately to do a sketch and then put a black background around it so I did that and kind of cool want to do that again you should try it too. And then that's it, you guys. This is just a doodle that my friends made. Cute little note I got for Christmas and a random magazine paper I pasted in. So <laughs> now it's definitely over. Um, 
So that is where I decided to end the sketchbook and start a new one. Thoughts on the sketchbook itself. I enjoyed it. I used it for a long time. I tried so many materials and the coolest part is that like you can see how much my style changes throughout all these pages. Like almost on every page it changed a little bit. Um, which was cool to see and what I like that I came to this and this is pretty much what I ended up doing ever since using alcohol markers pretty much only them and drew, do a lot of portraits and a bit of landscape um, here and there but you'll see I'm super thankful that I had this sketchbook um, with me on my art journey for so long more than a year um, and do recommend you guys this brand for sure for sure for sure uh, Loistrom 1917 again if you have kind of a similar style of what was going on in this sketchbook if you could even call this a style you will like it it helped me to realize what material I like the most and then going from that point you would know what paper you would exactly need so if you are in that point where you're still using lots of materials and maybe this is your style and you're planning to continue using different materials i think this is like this is the one this is a really really good sketchbook also another big pro is that they have a lot of different colors for copper which i think much more inviting than black cover of a moleskin <laughs> or the red one that they also have as a choice. So yeah, that's just something to think about. Now, onto the new sketchbook that I started because I had so many people message and comment me on TikTok that I should try Moleskin and that Moleskin is so amazing, especially with markers. And of course, at this point I started to look for something to use with alcohol markers specifically and look what is best. So I tried this one. And then I also tried Render Sketchbook. I heard very mixed reviews from different artists. Some say it's super good. I really like the artworks that they did in that sketchbook. Then some artists did their review where it was doing kind of similar thing that the stone sketchbook did where it like didn't allow you to layer much so I just needed to see it for myself just because I I was super curious about it I think I'll start with the render it worked really well it really doesn't bleed through whatsoever like not even a little bit the only like look how much I layered here that's a huge painting I did it for a long time I layered so many markers here absolutely nothing this was just a new sketch i was starting absolutely nothing that is truly incredible that is all i've done so far the pros that it allows you to layer markers uh it doesn't bleed through at all and i do like that it has a soft cover even though it's black it kind of reminds me of that strathmore mixed media sketchbook everyone likes um, the only con, no, I have two cons. So one con is that it comes in a very large size and it's really hard to order. It took me a while to find where to buy the sketchbook. Uh, it's easier to find them on uh, the ring format, but I hate ring sketchbooks. Uh, so I wish uh, I could find this one kind of similar to the size of Moleskin uh, because the next size that I could order is incredibly small and even so I think it was out of stock and the other con is that when you draw in the sketchbook it kind of feels like it's drying your marker out like it almost feels the same as mixed media paper which is not great for alcohol markers um, same like watercolor paper, watercolor paper, paper even worse. You might think, oh, the thicker the paper, the better, because then your markers won't bleed through. First of all, it will still bleed through, 
and it will also eat up so much of your marker ink that you will run out of your marker in days um, and I actually, while doing this illustration, I feel like I ran out of so many of my Copics, which are quite expensive, and still waiting on the refills that I ordered. Um, and I think this has something to do with the chemical it has in the paper that allows it not to go through the paper, so it absorbs more ink, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure what the paper is made out of and how it's made, but you can see um, that the markers are working great. I love how these portraits turned out, I like how vibrant the markers are. Oh, another thing is that for some reason in this sketchbook, when you put the marker, the first layer looks super dark, not how the color looks um, like once it dries it becomes a normal beige color, but if I were to put this color onto the paper, it would be closer to this color, which is a bit confusing, so you need to wait more for layers to dry in order to kind of figure out where you are at in your sketch, to know if you need to go darker, or if you need to blend more, um, or more color, or less color. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit challenging, but it still works. You know, it works and it's great if you definitely hate that the markers are bleeding through. I think then this is for you and that you can just use cheaper markers or just get those Copic refills and just mm, refill the marker a bit more often, which I'm also like, don't take my word. I am not sure if that's even the case, if it does absorb more ink or not. I'm not sure. I think it just felt that way for me, but there's really no way to tell. I think the part of the problem was also just the big format for small markers. Obviously, you will run out of the ink fast because of that as well. So that could be why. But overall, I do really enjoy it. I love that it doesn't bleed through. That is a huge pro because no other sketchbook can do that. At least um, I'm not aware of any of them. Uh, that could do similar thing to this one. Let me know if you do know of something else. Uh, okay, now my most used sketchbook to at this day is this Moleskin. I started it, so I guess in the beginning of February, you could say. Um, but I have been working in it consistently ever since. And can't tell you where the sticker from. All of these are gifts from friends or some uh, freebies from pen pals and things like that. And then I have some stickers over here. These are from the uh, gifted type shop again, uh, just a stationary gift supply store. This was a sticker I got at the hockey match I went to. This was from some sort of product that my partner ordered. Uh, and then this is the uh, Pokemon sticker sheet that I had for the longest time. Don't know where from or where I found it. Um, and then this is a little post sticker, forgot what it's called, but you know what I'm talking about from one of the letters I received. And then this is also from that store. Then these two stickers are from my friend Emily who sent me a cute letter and I actually received it today and I had these two stickers that she gave to me as a cute little gift. I f I'm in love with this cowboy frog. This is my favorite sticker ever. Let's start. This is the first spread. This was a reference I found on Pinterest and I wanted to play around with the background for a portrait. In general, I like to use more background for my portraits now and this was a, a painting study uh, of some old renaissance painting I forget what artist it is and this is just a cute little uh, study of some flowers uh, I found a photo online uh, everything is done with my new ahuhu markers so all of this is pretty much all ahuhu I don't think there are any Copics there, maybe one or two markers that I used, but most of it is a hoo-hoo. 
they do bleed through a lot. Let me just show you. This is just uh, some swatches I did with Ahuhu markers. This is how much the, they bleed through. What I do, uh, I'm wasting paper. <laughs> I put two pages together uh, and that way it looks as if I have no bleed through. Uh, Ahuhu markers also come with this uh, plastic sheet of paper which is so awesome because expensive sets of Copics do not come with that. And I think it's so great how Ahuhu also send you a bunch of swatch sheets, uh, it, like books with information on the colors they have. And uh, this thing helps a lot. So when I sketch, I would put this underneath so that it wouldn't bleed through two pages because if you layer like I do, Sometimes they could bleed through several pages, which is crazy. So yeah, what I'm doing in this sketchbook is I'm just gluing pages in because I am only using alcohol markers right now. And that is what's working for me. And I know it's kind of horrible <laughs> for me to waste paper like that, but I really, really love how markers look in the smallest can spe sketchbook. I really love uh, drawing with markers in Moleskine. I'm still curious to try some other sketchbooks recommendations that you guys told me to try but so far I have this sketchbook and I think I'm gonna go through it first and then try the next sketchbook um, just so I wouldn't <laughs> end up with a bunch of started sketchbooks like it usually happens. Um, here is the next spread. So these are just portraits from Pinterest that I found. Really like doing these. My favorite is probably this one. It is lighter than all the other portraits. I just love how gentle and how simple it is. And I think I really like the color palette in here. I think I'm a big fan of like green yellow tones lately. I also really like this man here, of course, but he's just super, super rendered, which is awesome. I the, They're like completely two different vibes. This one is not rendered much at all but I think I like it because of that so yeah I do want to incorporate that style more from now on and then the last page I did I didn't finish the spread but <laughs> I have started watching office for like a third time from the beginning already that is my favorite TV show of all time so I did a cute little cartoony style of the characters from The Office, Jim Pam, over here, because I love them so much, their story, but I honestly love so many characters from them, from the TV shows, so I still have two to go. Maybe let me know who I should do, because I have only two slots left. I have not decided yet, so <laughs> let me know who your favorite characters are from this TV show. But yeah. Everything is done with Copics again. I did shade it with pens here and there. Same with previous portraits. What I did, I put the uh, markers first and then I would go with some ballpoint pen to add some details. And that is probably my go-to technique right now. And I think I'll be using it probably throughout this whole sketchbook or at least try to maintain it unless something suddenly changes completely in my life and I go to a completely different art medium, which honestly could happen <laughs> knowing me. Uh, but yeah, so far I really like using markers and just a ballpoint pen. It is the fastest way, the most enjoyable way I found for me to keep my sketchbook and to render people or other subjects. Yeah, that is all you guys, that is all I have to show for you today. I'm so happy you stick with me to the end of this video. It was so nice to chat with you and let me know your thoughts. Just let me know what sketchbook you think is best. If you know a better sketchbook that I should try, let me know if you like this style or the cartoony style more from the beginning of the video. And if you also like using alcohol markers. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much for staying and hopefully I'll see you 
next time soon for a little draw with me using alcohol markers video which i am planning to do for a very long time already i will link all the products down below uh, some links might be affiliate so it would really help me out if you check them out love you guys to the moon and back please follow me and like the video if you like my art if you like this video i will continue posting more and more often i promise you that have a good rest of your day or night.